Today I'll be playing Flashlight for 10 hours straight. I'll be playing 5 different songs over 10 hours, and unlike the easy mod video, I really have no clue what to expect with this one. Make your predictions now what the results will be in 10 hours. I am so sorry. Flashlight, the mod almost nobody uses and for good reason. It makes nearly every map impossible to sight read by limiting what you can see to an area around your cursor. It doesn't change your AR, your OD or any of the difficulty settings, it just makes it so you can't see notes in the dark. Now let's answer some important questions. Which of the ghosts in Pac-Man are the hottest? But more importantly, how do you learn Flashlight? Both are very good questions and for the first one I prefer Pinky. As for the second one, let's go a bit more in depth. Flashlight can't actually be learned as a whole. It's genuinely impossible to sight read a map on Flashlight unless you're playing one star but that's not what I'm talking about and you have to memorize the whole map. While you can't learn Flashlight itself, what you can learn is how to better memorize a map. There are a bunch of ways to memorize a map. You could retry it over and over or you could split up the map into smaller chunks and memorize those. The way I'm going to do it is what I'm going to call reverse chunking. You cut out the last section of the map and memorize that. Once you're familiar with it, tack on a new section onto the back of it and memorize that. This way you get not only a new section to memorize but you have to play through the rest of the sections you've memorized. It's a great refresher to make sure you still remember the other sections. Of course, if I wanted to I could also just spam through the map over and over but I'd go even more insane if I did that. Because Flashlight is so specific, I'm going to be pulling off the 10 hours a little bit differently than when I did 10 hours of easy. I'm going to split 5 maps up into 10 hours, 2 hours per map to memorize and learn, and I'll up the difficulty each map to challenge myself. With all that said and done, let's begin the torture. Our first 2 hours takes us to a pretty old map, Chocobo. Chocobo is really just here for me to get used to memorizing maps because Easy and Flashlight go together kinda like wine and cheese. Also, Chocobo is CS6, so there's that. My first hour was mostly spent memorizing the map. For each chunk, I mainly played until I felt comfortable with it, and then I moved on to the next chunk. And it was actually going by a lot faster than I thought. 15 minutes in and I was already memorizing the third chunk, or about halfway through the map. Ah! One thing I didn't really take into account was that memorizing a map means listening to it over and over and over again. You have no idea how fucking painful it is to listen to Chocobo for an hour. <laughs> Something I quickly realized around this time was that memory wasn't the only important skill you needed for flashlight. Surprisingly, you also needed to have a lot of confidence. After you memorize a map and you start playing it for real, you might doubt your memory mid-song. Doubts lead to hesitation and hesitation leads to misses. The only way to fix this that I can think of would be just to memorize the map even more. Two misses. I need to not hesitate. Another interesting thing that I noticed was that I didn't really get tired like I did on the easy mod video. Just to recap in the easy video, I mentioned that I was in a negative feedback loop where I would continuously get demotivated since I was pushing maps too far out of my comfort zone and in return would get really bad results. For Flashlight, I expected something similar but I actually got quite the opposite. Because I was practicing in chunks, I would see consistent improvement and that just meant more positive results. Because of that, I didn't really get demotivated while playing just general fatigue you would get from long play sessions. That's enough of me rambling about mindset, you're here to see some guy torture himself with a flashlight. Dude, it's always that note, I don't know why. I think I got it down though. FUCKING DUDE! I managed to memorize most of the map during hour 1 since the map was quite short. So hour 2 was mainly spent trying to improve my score as well as revise my memory. During hour 2, I only played the full map and managed to improve my score slowly every time, ending up with my best score of the map having 569 combo. What the fuck, 569? But of course, I didn't get the score without pain. Come on, I'm almost there. I'm so close. I just need to lick some buttholes. What? Anyway, Chocobo was really just a test to see if memorizing a map in two hours was actually feasible. Now that I had my answer, it was time to move on to...
What the fuck? So for the second song of the day, I decided I wanted to raise the stakes a little higher and settled on Rubik's Cube, a classic map but not one exactly known for flashlight. This was going to be a huge jump. Chocobo is 4.5 tree stars whereas Rubik's Cube is 5.5. But there was one saving grace. While Rubik's Cube is definitely harder than Chocobo in terms of star rating, the mapping is a lot more symmetry focused. What this means for flashlight is that memorizing whole chunks of notes would generally be much easier. A good example of what I mean by symmetrical is this section. Now let's look at that section without flashlight. Patterns like these groups of four sliders were super easy to memorize as, well, they're all symmetrical. Memorization for this song generally wasn't the problem. The problem was, I'm not sure what to call it, but I'm just gonna call it a blind shot, since that's what it feels like. A blind shot for me is a jump with zero visual information that is there, meaning you have to rely only on memory. An example of what I mean is this. After the slider, I know that the next circle is somewhere around here, but because I haven't seen any visual indicator of the circle, I have to rely only on feel and memory. Meaning... Uh, I am fucking done, dude. It's the size of a truck! How are you missing?! But other than that, Rubik's Cube actually went really well. Similar to Chocobo, I spent hour 1 on memorizing the map, and hour 2 on actually playing the map and ironing out mistakes in my memory. I actually managed to play through the map, and after the point I could see a flashlight pass actually being viable. And turns out, it was. That's actually pretty really good, what the fuck. Yo, I actually passed. At this point, I had pretty much accomplished my current goal for the map and decided to try taking it up a notch and try some hidden flashlight. I came up with an excellent tip for playing hidden flashlight. Don't play hidden flashlight. Ay 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 ay. They looking for the shooter. <laughs> Rubik's Cube was fun. New was painful. That's... That's basically the entire chapter. New was a 2 minute long, 190 BPM, 6 star stream map with more blind shots than the eye can see. Literally. From the very first chunk, I was missing. A lot. I was tempted to say screw it and play the chunks without flashlight, but I decided that I really wanted to torture myself and decided to just push through all the chunks with flashlight and no fail. I missed. A lot. What the fuck is going on? Winston Churchill once said, At any rate, that is what we are going to try to do. Wait, wait, that's a wrong quote. Winston Churchill once said, If you're going through hell, keep going. It basically means that the only way out of a tough spot is to keep going, and so I did. I tirelessly pushed through the chunks and watched my miscount slowly decrease. Something I got while playing Flashlight that I never really got with a lot of the other skill sets was constant physical evidence of improvement. Because I was playing in chunks, I saw the results screen a lot, and every time I did see it, for the most part there was almost always an improvement. It was fun, but also very painful. So aside from the obvious star rating bump, why was this map so hard to pass? Surprisingly, the comma section was one of the hardest parts to hit. I'll play it back for you and add a counter for every single blind shot.
Why why do I keep doing these things to myself? I'm not even gonna mention how disorientating it is to play streams with flashlight, but the more intense sections were actually somehow less of a mindfuck. Anyways, after lots of retrying, at the end of hour 2 I actually managed to pass new and get the second flashlight pass on the map with GN, which was super promising for the next few songs. Fucking sick! <laughs> Alright, another classic map. This video seems to have a trend of only having old maps. Anyways, while this map is 5 stars, lower than Rubik's Cube and new, I picked this map for its length. It's the longest map out of the 5, and I wanted to see how effectively I could memorize a longer map in 2 hours. It, it, it doesn't go well. Putting aside any difficulty that comes with memorizing a long ass map, I was exhausted from playing Flashlight by hour 7, almost to the point of pure disgust. I wasn't demotivated, no, I was just really, really fucking tired. To put it into perspective of how tired I was, here's the entirety of hour 7 on my editing software. The bottom audio track is my microphone, and you can see I only spoke once. ONCE! What? But I didn't want the point of this video to be the same as the easy video one, being TAKE BREAK TOO! So I just pushed on despite my brain running on autopilot. I will say one thing in hindsight though, I underestimated the difficulty of War Riot. It's filled with those pesky blind shots I talked about earlier, and while the mapping is symmetrical, it's a lot more inconsistent with its symmetry than Rubik's Cube. There could be a blind shot anywhere, at any time. This was the hardest map to memorize by far. Here's a few examples of why War 8 was so hard to memorize for me. In this section, I just hit the slider on the left. Monkey Brain says go to the right because the follow point is going to the right, but Monkey Brain also says there's a massive slider in front of you. Monkey Brain doesn't know which one to hit, so Monkey Brain just freezes and misses. Yeah, I'm, I'm really dumb. But putting that aside, how was the experience trying to memorize a marathon? You might not believe it, but it was actually surprisingly doable. The way memorization worked for me at least, was that I was integrating the map into my muscle memory. I wouldn't really be able to pinpoint where the next note was exactly, but my hands would be able to move automatically after playing the chunk over and over. This process actually didn't really change much on the longer map, even though I thought it would've. While I wasn't able to set any ridiculous scores or anything during hour 8, I did manage to pass the map on FL. If my time constraints were looser, I might have been able to go for a better score, but for the sake of this video, I did manage to squeeze in the pass on Warite. Of course, that doesn't mean I completely memorized the map. The passes had a lot of misses. Maybe next time I'll dedicate some hours to one map to see how far I can go. So by the end of War Riot, I had actually already accomplished what I had set out to do. Learn how to play Flashlight and memorize maps to an extent. You can count the chapters an extra chapter if you will, but this is where I threw away my reverse chunking and tried the alternate method of memorization, Brute Force. Let's get some things out of the way. Brute Force is, without a doubt, the most inconsistent and most painful method of memorization. But it does work. Let me tell you a story. A few years back, I would go to the arcade almost every day and play Taiko. While starting out, I would play one single song, Senbon Zakura, over and over and over. Eventually, after playing it so much, I tried blindfolding myself and passed on the first try. I had played Senbon Zakura so much, I'd memorized the map on accident without trying at all. So that story was really just a proof of concept that Brute Force works, but why did I pick the Big Black? Well, because I had played the Big Black 1200 times, according to my user page. This is more than, what, double my second most played map, Airman apparently. Starting off hour 9, there was actually some promise. I could play the introductory section of the Big Black decently, and I managed to get through to the mid section. Now, before anything else, here's something to take away from this video, if anything at all. If you're really trying to learn FL, don't brute force it. 
Take your time and memorize it in however way you like, but don't brute force it. Just trust me on this. I was in pure agony for two hours straight. The problem section I had with the Big Black was actually the end section. For a good chunk of those 1,200 plays, a bunch of them never made it to the end since I spammed it when I was a small six digit. Because I was brute forcing like an idiot, I had to play through the entire map to practice the end section. I, I, I do realize if you had any sense at all, you would create a new difficulty, but it, it's funny. Basically, by brute forcing, you're really just torturing yourself mentally without much efficiency at all. The Big Black was the one map out of the five I couldn't pass, and at the end, I just tore my head off. This is the resulting sound of four hours of fatigue, two hours of stupidity, and ten hours of flashlight. I, 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 I... So I played ten hours of flashlight. How did it go? Flashlight was surprisingly one of the most rewarding and fun skill sets to learn, unless you go ape shit and brute force everything. Thank you for watching this video. This video is a lot shorter and more minimal than the easy video because I've been a little bit busy lately with life and some other stuff. But other than that, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed.